So for this next task, we're going to be going through my feed room, taking a look at some of the feeds, minerals, and whatnot that I use on our operation. Uh, biggest thing, uh, whenever you're looking at feed, is you really want to kind of look at what your goals are for your animals. If you're feeding, uh, maybe a supplement, um, you really want to pay attention to what's going on. I've got Delta Lamb and New Breeder. Um, it does have the medication in it to help prevent coccidiosis in the young sheep, but you can get the ones that are untreated. I recommend getting the treated ones just so that you're able to help prevent outbreaks of coccidiosis. Uh, it's a lot easier to prevent than it is to treat. It's a lot cheaper in the long run. Pay attention to your feed labels. They do list out the ingredients within it and your percentages. It'll show you what's in the feed. Um, the other thing, as you're going through and deciding, you know, I, I like Perina. Uh, they do a lot of research and a lot of animal studies on their feeds before it actually gets kicked out to be used by, the, you know, the general population. Um, and they do guarantee their feed. If there is an issue with their feed with your animals, they will try to help resolve what's going on with it. Um, and I chose the Delta Lamb and Ewe breeder just because the way I am running my breeding program, I will have ewes in some stage of pregnancy throughout the year. And I'll have lambs on the ground throughout the year. And out of all the feeds when I went through and pulled up all the feeds that Perina offers, this to me was the best feed to support both of those and I could feed it to my rams rather than having and so I could just buy one feed instead of buying multiple types of feed. Uh, sheep mineral is the Frano Wind and Rain. Um, biggest thing, I like to get mineral designed specifically for a particular species of animal and the reason for that is they take into consideration the uh, things that they actually need. Each animal species requ may require just a little bit of different uh, level of vitamin B, vitamin A, selenium, copper, no copper. And so when you buy the mineral that's actually made specifically for the animals, it will have the ratios and the percentages already calculated out for what that animal normally needs in a day. Uh, this is a loose mineral. Whenever you put it in the bucket, they can eat it free choice, and they will self-regulate themselves. Some people say, oh, no, they don't self-regulate. They do. Uh, if you first put it out and they haven't had any in a while, then they're apt to go and eat a lot of it because their body is craving those minerals. But once you get them on it for a little bit, they should start self-regulating to where you can see it's it's a constant, but it's not a heavy eating of the mineral. Uh, one thing I have here is because I got some kid goats in right now that we are... Um, Raising up, I've got the show lamb grower. It is also treated. Um, just uh, I'm using it because of the higher fat percentage in it for those kids. They're a little bit underweight, so I'm trying to get their fat back up. They're a little bit higher on the fiber, so it's not going to overload their system initially, unlike my other feed potentially. In a, and used in kind of a refeed. They also use this for their show animals um, to help push the meat, the muscling and the growth the way it should be to get them ready for shows. Um, once I get rid of the goats, uh, they this will go away. I won't get it again. It's the reason why I have it is for the goats right now. And so I back up here and kind of 
pan out to show you the feed room. I've got some metal shelving that I can keep extra feed buckets. Uh, and I got the bags of feed on them just to keep them up off the ground. And I've got my buckets here. I do have ducks and geese, so I have a container of bird feed in here. I have a container to keep my mineral once I open up the bag. And that's the same thing with the uh, metal buckets. I like the metal buckets just because if you do get rodents in here, they're not as apt to be able to chew through that. Unlike if you get the plastic buckets like the one shown here, they can, and I have had mice chew through those. Um, that was in a uh, feed room that wasn't as closed in as this shed is. So it's something to think about whenever you're um, uh, setting up a feed room. You really want to try to get a well-built shed to be able to put your feed in. It protects the feed from the rodents. Um, rodents do carry diseases and you, it just helps you protect your investment in the animals by protecting the feed. And here, uh, this actual shed is an 8x15. So one half of it, I got my grain and mineral and what and extra supplies, and then the other half is my uh, coastal hay and alfalfa. So while we're on the topic of nutrition, I want to go over a few additional items that I have that aren't kept out in the feed room, and that's because they actually need to be in a cool, dry location to keep them from going bad. Um, I have colostrum that I keep on hand. It's a powder form. You mix it up when needed. Uh, the one I have is a multi-species. I'm not as fond as of the multi-species. For the same reasons, I'm not fond of multi-species feed or uh, mineral. It's a general feed, a general colostrum, and it doesn't target down to the specific needs of my sheep and or goats. So, I was given this though from a friend that was getting out of sheep, and that's what she had on hand. And I will use it. It's just not my preferred. So here I have actual lamb and kid colostrum replacer. So sheep and goat, kids. If for some reason you have a mom that milk didn't come in, has mastitis, or for some reason you lose the mom, or you have, say, triplets, quadruplets, and mom's not able to support all of them, then it's a good idea to have colostrum on hand so that you can get them going. You need to get that into them within the first 24 hours preferred. You got up to 48 that you can get it into them, but you start getting diminishing effectiveness after 24 hours. Uh, same thing for electrolytes. I have the paste that I usually give my guys. I was given this from my friend that was getting out of sheep and she had the multi-species electrolytes. Um, here I have a uh, lamb milk uh, replacer. Uh, you have some that are, and you got to pay attention whenever you're out there because there's some that are milk replacers and there's some that are milk supplements. If you're going to be bottle feeding a lamb, you need the milk replacer. Um, difference in it is the fat content and everything that is needed. This is meant to fully support a baby lamb. The supplement um, is more for use to supplement. Like if you've got a mom that isn't producing the greatest of milk, so you want to give some additional milk through bottle, then that's fine because they're still getting the fat content and, not, and a lot of the immunity is passed to them from mom from her milk when they are eating from her, but the replace or the uh, supplement just gives them a little bit more additional milk so they're not hungry. Uh, but generally, 
Only thing I keep on hand is a replacer. Even if I'm having a supplement, I'll do it with a replacer instead of a supplement. That way I know they're getting everything in there that they need to be as successful as they're able to be. Uh, one of the things, uh, no matter what species of livestock, I'd always recommend keeping at least a little bit of colostrum powder on hand and a little bit of uh, milk replacer on hand. Um, just especially if you're doing year-round uh, bursts. That way, if something happens, you've got it on hand, but don't keep too much of it because it does go bad. It does have an expiration date on it. Keep a little bit on hand. If you find you have to start feeding, then you go pick up additional fresh items. That way you're not wasting um, a bunch of milk replacer or colostrum because you had a whole bunch on hand, but you only needed it for one lamb. Uh, this item here is Dine. Uh, they make a variety for sheep, goats, cows. Uh, uh, Dine, it's a high calorie liquid nutritional supplement. Uh, generally what I'll do is I'll take and put it on their feed. Um, or I'll do it, pull up in a syringe and give it to them like a paste. Um, what I keep it on hand for is... If I get any lambs that may be a little bit down, give it to them for just a little bit of an additional booster. Uh, give them a little bit of energy and everything to kind of help pop back up. Generally what that is used for is for your show animals. Just to help put those additional calories in there as you're working them to be able to get them in the show, uh, their top-notch show uh, quality. Nutri-Drench, I use this also as a booster. Um, just that way, and again, you can top dress this on your feed, or you can do, like I said, like I do usually a syringe and give it like a paste, just so I know they've gotten it. Um, again, I use this to help boost them if they're, you know, just something's going on there, maybe just a little bit down, or, you know, you notice they're a little off. Uh, help them give them a little bit of a boost without pushing a ton of food into them. And a lot of times you'll see them perk up then.